Not that it matters, because I don't know. I don't even know if you can go back and watch lives, but you're gonna probably see a lot of my ass. I mean, my horse <laughs> today. We're gonna trim his feet, and there's something kind of funky about like why people want to watch um, horses' feet get trimmed, but I see them everywhere. Um, I do believe in horse shoes. I don't believe that I'm not like a barefoot trimmer because I believe that there are sometimes horses need shoes, but I also believe that there's a lot of ways to do it outside of just the traditional metal shoes. But um, for what my horses are doing, they're fine. So um, there's three reasons if you are going to shoe a horse, there's three basic reasons that you shoe a horse or put some kind of protection on their foot. And it's for either um, performance so like if you're if you're in track you'd ride it wear track shoes if you're in basketball you wear basketball shoes right same kind of concept so these guys aren't in like a sport of performance they're you know for lack of a better term of therapy horses we do a lot of great you know empowerment work here think tony robbins with horses if you will so they don't really need to like be able to do like super high level performances so they just need a basic trim and um so i'm trimming this this is part of the foot it's called the frog so just come in here and do a little cleanup of that. Get any, get rid of any necrotic tissue. And then we come in with this really sharp knife and I'm wearing what is called a farrier's apron. Tracy, Trace. Trace is giving me kisses on my booty. Kiss my booty. And then I come in with my rasp. I don't use a nippers because I generally, he's a little long, but I generally keep them up like Instead of coming in using fingernail clippers and clipping your fingernail, I just kind of keep the rasp on it all the time. That way it doesn't get like this. So this is a little, like I said, the he's are a little long here. And he's like, bad like a boy. I love that sound. That sounds like he's like relaxing. And finally, have that glass of champagne and enjoy your pedicure trays. So coming here. This is a hard work, you guys, being under a horse like this. Like, I don't do this for a living. I did actually go to school for it, so I did learn how to become a farrier from actually an equine podiatrist. So I did um, learn the trade, and I can actually shoe. And we talked about shoeing for, for, for performance. Another reason you would shoe is for orthopedics. Like, if there's a club foot issue or some kind of health issue with the horse. Um, you'll do something like that. So this is Trace. I'll introduce you to him in just a second. He's being kind of a stinker. Can you stand still, please? Yeah, you got some flies on you. What's going on? We're in Florida, so down here, West Palm Beach. And uh, this is one of my rescue horses, Trace. Not tech. He's the only one that isn't like straight from a rescue or from a really neglectful situation, but he did sever both tendons on his right front leg and uh, was spent 16 months in a rehab facility. So we did everything from uh, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, stem cell, scaffolding, injections, all kinds of therapies, salt water, spas, we swam him, he uh, did hyperbaric chamber treatments. So it's been a lot of money rehabbing that right front leg and spending six months in a stall. I'm sorry, 16 months in a stall. Kind of what we've been up to, right? It's COVID. <laughs> you know, it's like spending that much time um, isolated. So it's months in a stall. Kind of what we've been up to, right? It's COVID. <laughs> you know, it's like spending that much time um, isolated. So it's kind of not make my life hard it's hard to be underneath a horse and um, trim their foot when they're moving around or shifting their weight so we'll see if he can stand a little bit more still maybe he had it on his face so I'll come in and just grasp his foot up and balance the foot to the hoof to the foot so if you think about it, there's a bone inside his foot that's kind of suspended inside his hoof. So we've got like our fingers are inside our, 
or you know underneath our fingernails but think about putting all of your weight and walking like a ballerina on top of your foot like that right so that's kind of what these guys are like they're walking on their their fingertips if you will so he's got a little little pebble there so make sure i get that out with my little pick here here we go and so that's just a little bit of a separation i can i uh, take this with my little knife here and help that can i get a little bit of the concavity there and i don't want to take go too deep because i don't want to cut into anything that would be supportive for him but to get that little bit of separation out is good there we go good let's clean that up come back make sure this is nice and flat and even everything's good there it's a little long on this side of the toe look at all this <laughs> all hitting the ground right and then in a second i'll put his foot up on my little pedestal my little stand and take off what's called the flare he doesn't he's not the kind of horse that gets a lot of flare you do a video with me training my horse maverick he's a thoroughbred and so has a propensity to have more flare than my good solid quarter horse here trace so I'll put his foot down gently that's important like it's my foot until it's his foot you don't want to like drop your partner you know so now we'll come and go stand high i know you're being such a brat this morning you're sitting around and making my life hard so when you're underneath the horse and you're holding their foot doing this and they turn their head like this you're like ah and it wrenches your back so you horse owners out there your farrier's jobs are hard enough make sure you have a horse that can stand quietly for the trim now again there's not a lot of flare here so i'll just come across and just make sure hi baby i love you i know i know what are you doing <laughs> what i love you i love you too so there's just a little bit on this, this toe here I'll just go around there's just a tiny bit there see how there's like a little bit a gap there trace you're killing me smiles there we go good boy that's not a lot what are you doing will you please not put your foot on where you're supposed to he's being such a rambunctious soul this morning <laughs> There, that's better. He's not having it today. He's not having it today. He's <coughs> like, I want to play and ride and go around. It's nice out. Pedicure in a spa was not what I had in mind. There we go. There. And then I'll come back, do one last little check, make sure there isn't any anything that I missed. Looks pretty good. That's nice. That's nice and pretty even there. A little bit there. Then I just get it this little bit there. And then I just get a nice little 45 degree angle. He's so bored. I know I haven't played with him in like weeks. That's okay. And then again, my foot till it's his foot. Nice and quiet. We'll put some hoof oil on there with some essential oils, and we're done. Good boy, kinda. You were a little bit crabby. <laughs> a little crabby, yeah. You don't wanna put it on the foot. One foot down, four, three to go, right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> I don't envy farriers that do this for a living. I don't, I tri just trim my own horses and a couple of friends' horses, but that's it, because I'm telling you, it is hard work. But I'll tell you something else, if you want that nice hamstring, because <laughs> you're sitting like this, for like a while doing work, you're gonna hold that position and you're like doing isometric movements and it's a great workout. So we're gonna get to the other three feet and two other horses and that's probably gonna be it for Jen today. <laughs> Hi, Bubba. Hi, Bubba. Hi. Hi. 
I'm gonna mess it. You mess with me, I'm gonna mess with you. You mess with me, I'm gonna mess with you. <laughs> So lives are good at about, people start generally watching at around the 20 minute mark. <coughs> FYI. If you're doing it. We've had like, alive? we've had 30, yeah, people watching. Nice. 30? Oh, yeah. Fabulous. I'm going to stop this. And then, and then roses and stuff. Yeah. So they can send you like, like if they want to sponsor a horse or. Like we could just, you are being really naughty. So naughty. <laughs> it's like I'm on camera and I can get away with it. <laughs> you're being so naughty. I know, you're so naughty. You're so naughty. He needs a bath. Oh God, he needs a bath. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dirty blonde today. Yeah. <laughs> He's a dirty blonde. Yeah, Trace. Uh, so yeah. Anybody watching who wants to get involved with what we're doing, saving horses, changing lives, can always reach out to me, send me a message. I will respond. Uh, we're doing a really great event coming up. We have a challenge coming up, a virtual challenge that we do once in a while that starts next week. And, or if you just want to get involved, you want to sponsor a horse, so you want to you know, get part of this mission. Yeah, see, look at those long bars. It's like, you waited too long, that's why I'm mad. That's not true. That's not why he's mad. He's mad because I haven't been out here in two days. And he's like, I want you to pay attention to me. I don't like doing back feet. Because I'm behind, I don't, they're just harder to hold. Not because I'm behind the horse and he's going to kick me. That's a fallacy. <sighs> but it is harder to get in, especially unless you're like strong. I mean, it takes muscle. You gotta get in here, man. See me with this knife and this pick and stuff? It's like, it takes take some work. I'm like doing six horses in a day. Oh my God. I'll get, look, I might get her. She's next. <laughs> She'll be the one I do next. Tuesday. That'll, that'll probably be it for me. Now Tuesday's got a cool story. She's an, she was an orphan, so. She, well, that's not cool, but she has a very interesting story. Her mother actually um, tried to attack her, and we had to take her away. We had to actually, she was removed from her mother because she was trying to kill her. And um, that is, I'm not saying that this happened with this horse, because I don't know her whole story. But I do know this. It does happen a lot of times with minis because they um, are handled a lot. And it's kind of like you pick up a baby bird, you know, and the mama doesn't know that it's its baby anymore and there's that disconnect. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that that's what happened with her, but it does happen with minis because what is cuter than a baby mini horse? And look at good of it. So again, it doesn't always happen. And you know, a lot of, everybody's gonna have all of them. Good, that's wonderful. And I'm grateful that you have these minis and you give them all that love. I'm just saying it does happen and it is a possibility. I'm buying lottery tickets, that's also possible. So all I'm saying is that sometimes things like that do happen as a result of them being overhandled. Oh, it's thirsty, it's hot. We're in Florida, sorry for everybody up in the Midwest getting that nor'easter coming <laughs> through, those ice storms and freezing weather. Whew. Cause I'm sitting here, I'm sweating, yo. Whew. Head, I will play with your face. I'll pick your nose and give you more noogies. Yeah, you sure you want to do that again? Yeah, okay, I will do it again. Okay, thank you. Oh my goodness. Oh. 
<laughs> that is how so not happy this trace is. <laughs> you know what? That was he lovely. Put out and we're done. Right? He's done. Now, could I force the issue? Sure, I could. He could go ahead and get his feet done. But he's, he's actually kind of done. And why not? Like, it's not crucial that I get this done right this minute. I'll actually go play with him or walk him around or give him some, you know, give him some attention. Because he really is, you know. And I could just say, hey, you know what? No, we got to get this done. Today's the day. This is happening. And you got to, like, that's it. But I just need to do a light trim under there. He's not in terrible shape. He doesn't have elf shoes or anything. And he's telling me, you know what? I just am not into this right now. So I'm gonna honor that. And that's really hard for us human beings saying, well, you're teaching him to, t to um, be naughty. You're teaching him to not be stand still for the fairy or you're teaching him. Okay, so what if I am? This is my horse, by the way, and nothing bad's happening. Uh, but number two, if maybe, for instance, he can recognize an, an, or I, that I am honoring what he has going on right now and that, that he is really not in the mood to have this done, and I can come back in a little bit and maybe play with him or take him, you know, take him for a little ride or do some, something with him that he is into, then maybe he'll be like, you know what, thanks for not just pushing me and, and thanks for understanding me. And you know, a lot of people out there are like, well, horses don't think like that. Oh, trust me, they absolutely do. So I have a couple of options here. I actually have, there's always more than two. I don't like you looking at me, thank you. I could say, all right, hold still, we're doing this. Like that's one option. I could just say, no, this is what needs to be done, we're doing this. Two, I could just let him go and come back and check in and see if he's in a better, better mind space. I could play with him a little bit. I could take him on a, you know, trot him around, get his mind engaged and then say, you know what? You wanna play and move around? Like, look at him now, he's like, I'm asleep. But really he's not. He's so bored, he wants to play so bad, but he's an introvert. See, look at him, he's like, well, can we play? So probably the best option for me to do with this horse right now is to play with him a little bit and move him around. So you wanna play a little and move around? Okay. And that's just my intuition. Ooh, wrong, downward dog. Let's no, see it. See? Okay. Let's see it. <laughs> he wants to play. He he's ready. Himself. He's stretching. Yeah, he's stretching. He's like, he's, get, he's ready. I'm ready for a warm up. So the best thing to him to think about is like, what can we do now to get his mind engaged? Nah, -uh, that's not what I said. I said back up. So now I'll play with him a little. Look at that crabby face. I call that poopy face. Poopy face. Hi, y'all. And right before Jen starts to play with Trace, make sure to follow us or find us on www.zetogen.com. You can yep. also find our Facebook group. Yep. Zoe Make sure to subscribe Jen. and like. Jen Zoe Hall at Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Because we have a lot of great videos on YouTube. We just started posting a really great series with my Arabian horse, Bella. Amazing stuff, you guys. Look at him. He's like so bored. Okay. Mm. <laughs> you know, by the way, I pissed him off.
was the most dramatic pee I've ever seen him take. <laughs> Oh, drama good boy. King. You're a drama king. And oh, he's not even done king. He's like, okay, I'm done. Oh, my God. Now, now can we go trim your feet after you walk and pee? Thanks, that's what I want to play with. Lord. So that's not what we're going to do. I'm actually going to pee. Wait, let's play a little. You, okay, you're going to pee some more? I've never seen him just be so ridiculous. He is being ridiculous. <laughs> He's so mad at me. He really is grumpy. He is grumpy. <sighs> Alright. Tracy could be worse. You could have to shower today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things to work with. So when you're dealing with an introvert, anybody have teenagers like this? Like, I'll do it at commercial. That's how he's acting right now. But rightfully so, because I've been at work. Mom, you're at work, so why should I? Oh, really? <laughs> Who's playing a game against me? You got 30 seconds. Actually, you got 7 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, go. You already peed a little. So, how do you get to an introvert to me? How do you get an introvert to do something? And you know what's surprising and why I never have a problem with him? Um, with his feet is because it's just standing still. Like, how hard is it to get an introvert to stand still? Now he's looking into it, which means he's processing something. Oh my god, he's so annoyed with me. He could be so less interested in anything I have to say. So if I say anything to him now, it better be really interesting. Like, he should be wearing this shirt. <laughs> nope. I'm asking him to go forward. Yeah, my body language is up and I'm pointing to the point there. Okay. Take your time, Trace. I'll be collecting social security before you make a decision. <laughs> but you can't force him. You can't push him. He's so, like, he's so in his head right now. So I'm going to ask him to go step on these mats over here but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force him it has to be his idea Trace has been trolling us the whole the whole day. That's he it. He has been. That's it. He has been. Absolutely. <laughs> he has been. If he, if he gets, <laughs> oh, good boy. Oh, gosh. oh, yay. Good boy. Look at that. That's good. He's like, okay, this is a little different. He's been farting, <laughs> and we've been pissing him off, and... So I gotta pull it like like pull him out of his shell very carefully. Cause I could really put him in a place where he's like, F you. That's all. I was saying that this morning. <laughs> oh. oh my god. And they just for anybody that's worried about these being unsafe, they're all mats stacked on one another. Funny Thank you, Trace. What was that? Dante. <laughs> <laughs> Dante, he photobombing us. He's 
like, why? I won't be troll you. I'm only, I'm your number one fan, Mom. Come play with me. <laughs> oh no, we got the boss yeah, coming. one more time and it would still be interesting. Outside of that, it'd be like, ugh, here's the dumb mat game again. So now I'm gonna start playing a little bit different game. There we go, thank you. Now I'm gonna take you, change things up, keep things interesting. And the funny thing is, is, the last time I was out here, I had people here that wanted to kind of to see what his level of training was and like what he was up to. Cause we're, you know, there's some, for filming and some different purposes that I'm not talk about yet. <laughs> and now look at these two over here. Look at these two nutballs. Now, um, so last time I was out here, we did like his regular dog and pony, lay down, rear, do his cool tricks. So I didn't spend time with him. I came out and got him and did stuff with him and other people, right? have a good idea and you share it with somebody and they're like yeah I don't know and then somebody else tells them the same idea and they come to you and they go hey you know what my friend Susie told me about this really great idea that you told me about two months ago that I said was dumb what do you want to say Ugh, I told you about that months ago that's ego but if on the other hand you can say wow that's so cool I'm glad you thought of it. Who cares? Like, who cares if it was your idea, your credit, or whatever? Does it really matter? Why did you want them to have the information in the first place? For you to get validation that you're smart? Do you already not know that about yourself? And if you don't, maybe you need to check in with yourself. Yeah, I tag you. Tag you in, too. Ah, there. Now. Woman, and she just kind of moved. But I didn't really tag her that no. way. Right? It hurt. It's like, it's like a little flick with the towel. 
Mm. But not like, Mom, brother sent me with the towel again. Just a look at his face. He's like, what you gonna do? Now, I'm gonna wait until I get a little bit better attitude out of it. getting his feet trimmed too and say oh that's the new place where we stand still get a break and get rewarded
long that took. But I'll tell you something, it probably won me about 99 more trims before I have to do something like that again. Look at his face. <laughs> he's calm, he's relaxed, he's connected. He's a lot less grumpy. I'll be able to get in under him and play with him, like the game of stand still and hold your feet. Hi, Bobo. Instead of bribing him with cookies or cross tying him. Oh. Yeah, now you just nicker. Can you say hi? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know it's play. It's play. And he's like, oh. All right, so now he's got a little bit of time. His mind is like active. We played a little something. I got to reconnect with my horse, which is something I haven't done in a couple of days. So it's really cool to just come back and put my apron back on, do the hard work. Now, if you are not your own farrier, which most of us are not, horse owner wise, then do that before the farrier shows up. You just grab your horse out of the pasture and, you know, I mean, most, some horses do and we're all good. My horse is fine. Good. Great. Good for you. But if you have a situation that's like this where it's not great and perfect and awesome every single time and and was he being bad you guys was he pulling his foot away was he trying to kick me was he trying to bite me was he moving around no but i know my horses and i know horses and i know that um when you get into a space where it's just a little bit like this that's the grain of sand that's annoying the oyster if you want to take his halter off you can yeah. He was just dragging it around. But that's the first grain of sand that is annoying the oyster. And guess what happens? If you don't get it out, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So don't don't annoy your oyster. Don't annoy your oyster. Are you my oyster? Are you my lobster? <laughs> so let's see what we got. Good oh boy. Now it feels good. He's like, oh, I love you, Mom. It's not so bad. Because he talks like that. Okay? <laughs> human voice. Come on, Bubba. Here we go. Thank you. Now, if I still have a problem, if he still gets grumpy, guess what? I can do it again. If you're like, God, who's got time for that? All right, then just fight. Fight with him. That's fine, too. Give him a pill. Put him in Ridlin and tell him they have ADHD. Isn't that what we do to our kids? I mean, I may, may sound harsh, but it's true. It's what we do. Someone just asked if we were in Texas. We are in Florida, West Palm Beach. Hey, look at that. He's standing perfect. Mm -hmm. I get this foot trimmed in about 30 seconds when he's standing good and doing what I was asking him to do. It won't take me any time at all. We are in West Palm Beach, Florida. Woo! So make sure you follow us on Instagram. Zinner Jen, Jen Zoe Hall on Instagram. And uh, my YouTube channel. We got a lot. Subscribe to our YouTube. And follow us here on TikTok, of course. We're always doing cool, weird stuff out here. Saving horses and changing lives. Ha, ah, there's some more release. Oh, yay. yay. Troll. <laughs> the trolling farts of the horse. But that's more of a release now, whereas mm -hmm. before it really was. I mean, how can you read your horse's farts? Come on, y'all. It's true. I said y'all. No, I'm not from Texas. I'm actually from Missouri, believe it or not. You don't have to believe me. You can say, I, you don't believe that I'm from Missouri. I am. <laughs> I know. I told somebody something the other day and they said, I don't believe you. I was like, are you calling me a liar? And they go, well, I guess so. I'm like, all right. Well, that's not my job to try and convince you of me. I know what I, I know my truth. Mm, this one's kind of a little off center here, but we'll get in here. See that little necrotic tissue. See how good he's being now? And you know what? We, uh, we rarely have time to invest in ourselves and do things right and, you know, but we have time to do it wrong over and over, right? And I don't have time. I get that all the time. And I say, you know, this, I think this challenge, because I have this really cool um, journey to self-love challenge coming up. I'm like, you know, I really just don't have time. I'm really busy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but I wouldn't be telling you about it if I didn't think it was gonna help you have more time and have more awareness about who you're allowing in your life that's actually sucking your time or blowing through your boundaries or what have you, you know? Because that's what happens. We don't have time because we give in to other people's demands, you know? You know, you ever hear that analogy where the professor has a jar and uh, he's filling the jar up, right? 
and he fills the jar full of marbles and he asks the class, is this jar full? And the class like, yeah, it's full, it's full of marbles. And he goes, he goes, hey, hey, you're right. Uh, he goes, hey, you know, now I'm gonna put sand in it. And um, he fills it up with sand after they already said it was full of marbles, right? There we go, good boy. You got a fly, what happened there? And they go, oh, now it's full. You know, it's got marbles in it and it's got sand in it. And then he gets water. He pours the water on top of the sand on all that. And like now maybe it's full. So what do we generally end up doing? Because the marbles are what are important to our lives. Like we didn't even, we didn't come this far just to come this far. We didn't work this hard just to work this hard. We're doing all of this work and all of these stuff to get to a place to feel a certain way right so when you're giving into other people's demands and you don't have time to do it right then it's like putting the sand in the jar first and wondering why you don't have room for marbles because the marbles is that's that's the juice that's the play that's the fun that's the hi i love you right he had a little pull there but I don't, I'm not even sure what that was and who knows, it doesn't matter. We'll do the other foot and he'll be done. And then what do I do? Put him away. Good job, thanks a lot. No, no. Okay, come on guys, do we build our muscles at the gym? No, you go to the gym to tear your muscles down. We build our muscles after the gym. When we have our meal or our protein shake or you know whatever our recovery is. Our recovery is when the muscles get built. The contemplation after the event or the trauma or the happenstance is when our emotional muscles get built. Our relationship muscles get built with the cuddle after. You know? Don't be like, all right, thanks a lot. See ya. <laughs> Don't be that guy. So for him, after I trim his other foot, I'm gonna hang with him a little bit. I'm tired, I'm sweating, I'm kind of just trembling a little. It's been a while since I've trimmed feet. Be done and what I'll do is I'll just hang out with him. And I might give him a cookie. I'd like to give him a bath, but that would be I would like to give him a bath. He doesn't like baths. And he really doesn't care if he stinks or not. You don't care either because you can't smell it through the camera. The other thing I could do because I know he likes treats and cookies and things like that is that I could actually um, go and give him a cookie. Right now I could just like say or give him take a little time and say hey I'm still here for you. I'm not here against you. I'm not coming at you. I've never heard that phrase before until um, I made a recent acquaintance. And I was like, what is this coming at you? I, I'm not coming at you. I don't under understand what that phrase means, except that you think I'm attacking you. And I mean, I know I'm kind of an extrovert and I have my own thought processes and stuff, but now he tossed his head up there. I saw it in the shadows. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel him kind of pulling his head back and forth and stuff like that. So I might go, okay, that's all right. I get it. I get it. Can you calm down? It's all right. He's never, he hasn't been this crabby in a long time. I'll just wait for him. This is a good stretch for your delts too. You guys working out? There we go. There, he just offered it to me. Thank you very much. Wait for him, give him half a second. Not in a hurry. I, I, I mean, I had an agenda. I have a lot of shit to do today. I've got about my phone's blowing up and life. But I'm not gonna put the sand in my jar first. I'm gonna put the marbles in first. And he's a marble. In fact, he is the marble. He and the people that are here with me right now. I'm actually right now, with the exception of the few people that are on my team that are not here, this is why I'm here. And for people like you that are watching, that's why I'm here. So that's why it's important that we're out. Now look how good he's being. I mean, don't make a liar out of me, Trace. Being good right now. I'm like, hurry! No, don't hurry. Do it right. I need a new rasp. These things are really sharp when they're new. They're really hard to work with when they're not. 
Ah, ah, ah. Easy, 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 easy. I know. I'm not going to be here much longer. That's just him expressing his opinions. He's not being naughty. He's just telling me, hey, you know, I'm still maybe a little not super happy with you right now. Okay, I get it. And you know what? They got a nice trim. I could probably do a little bit more, but that's good for right now. Why overdo it? Be like, you've had, how long have you had this horse? How old is he? Does it matter? Address what's showing up. And if you want to know what that looks like, go read Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, and live in the present moment. Live in the generous present. So that's good for today. I can come back in an hour this afternoon or tomorrow. You're like, well, if I have a farrier, then do more preparation before he gets there, guys. And if you're a non-horse owner, this translates to every area of your life. Every area. Put your marbles in first. That's the important part. That's why we're here. That's why we live life. So we can feel a certain way and we can enjoy the things that we love and care about and spend time with the people that we love and care about and support the missions and causes that we care about. We don't work so hard to just get some pieces of paper with dead presidents on it. I'm like, well, I don't want the presidents, I want the Franklins. Okay, fine, whatever. But now we'll just go and play. Like maybe I'll just go hang out with him for a few minutes and say thanks. Thanks a lot, Sarah. He's like, oh, wait a minute. That wasn't so bad. Aw. Like, oh, come on, like, aw. Oh. He says, I still got to pee. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in, guys. You guys, this just, this is what is going through my brain. We just happen to have Fabby behind the camera today. So you get my little, my little mental musings about how we can take horses and use them for life lessons and learn how to believe in yourself. It will change your life. Make sure you're subscribing. Send me some messages. Send me some love. What's he doing? He's like, you're crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> you know I'm going to harass you and tell you.